Soldiers are expensive. Transport is expensive. Benefits? They're expensive. War involves spending a lot of money. For mercenaries, war is business, and businesses exist to make as much money as possible. Enter the war market. It's part job board, part stock market, part sports gambling, and in this video, I'm going to explain all of the self-indulgent details. If you're the kind of person who wants to know how the Senate works in Star Wars, then is this the video for you? On the market, every licensed mercenary unit, platoon, and company has a serial number, database, and monetary value attached to their name. Through the war market, captains hire their soldiers and assign them to OUs. Investors can buy and sell stock in all of them, including individual soldiers who make short-term IPOs to buy gear as well as full companies. Of course, investing in such a company does mean you're expecting to make money on dividends paid against earnings. Your money and your life can be signed away with the speed of a click. O12 knows this, which is why they created the marketplace during their early years in order to keep tabs on PMCs. At the start of the second space race, there were a lot of wormholes being charted and a lot of space being explored. And when you've got a colonialism, you've got a violence. You can't just rent out some uniformed Paul Blarts when you need to defend multiple space stations and multiple systems for weeks or even months. Ordinarily, this would mean that only the big established companies like Starco could compete. But not this time. The cameras were off, and this wasn't just an opportunity to make money as a security agency. Brutal events like the Barabar Vita Road Wars in Africa led to the creation of the Druze Bay Ram security, as well as the Wildcats. All it would take is a mid-sized spacecraft and a boarding party, and you could hold an entire settlement hostage. And with no oversight, any one of those security companies could be a pirate at the same time. The Central American Campaign, the Second Nanotech War, the Lunar Colony Revolts, all of these saw mercenaries let loose upon civilian populations without any real threat of punishment from Concilium or any of the great powers. That's where O12 came in. The supranational organization didn't just set up laws for mercenaries. O12 became the central clearinghouse for all mercenary work. In this way, you don't have the nomads just sending endless hordes of mercenaries when they have an issue with Pan-Oceania. Big corporations liked the idea because it meant they could buy security and industrial espionage for cheap, without needing to rely on word of mouth all the time. The hypercorps in Yujing and Pan-Oceania liked it because it meant they could dump old gear on a new generation of mercenaries. Plus, it meant a big boost to the economy, with lots of new jobs to feed, clothe, and attend to the mercenary industry. The war market gained wide acceptance during the Ariad and commercial conflicts. Companies like Starco joined the market, and where the market leader goes, so too do smaller enterprises. As the second space race gained momentum, there were plenty of board people who wanted to sign up to be a space mercenary, and plenty of financiers eager to get in on the action. O12 had to set out to make mercenary work more regulated and honorable. It did do the first, but it didn't do the second. However, they had accidentally created an entire industry of guys with guns. It was only a matter of time before Maya media companies got in on the action, leading to the mercenary culture of today. It's fun to bet on meme companies and see if they thrive or crash. It's fun to bet on a wholesome underdog. It's even more fun when you get to watch them live. Today, the war market is in a state of flux, and it's therefore an area of great opportunity. Many of the bigger companies are overstretched on the grinding Paradiso front and deployments on Concilium. Others lost big during the Karage Crisis on Dawn or the Japanese Uprising. It is therefore an ideal time for young up-and-coming heroes to make their living on the war market. Some analysts in Hak Islam are more pessimistic. In a capitalistic system, a boom is inevitably followed by a crash. A market crash could mean a glut of heavily armed and armored mercenaries that are out of work this is probably a bad thing. So, you want to get listed on the market. Well, first, you want to get in touch with Bureau Ganesh. Show them your books, update your permits. They'll assign a starting value to your company. You get to decide how many shares of stock you want to sell, much like a regular, non-violence-based stock market. And that's it. You're on the War Market Exchange. People can buy your stock and buy your services. You'll notice that it's very easy to become a mercenary company. This is intentional. If it's easier to watch a movie on streaming than it is to pirate it, 
people will probably just watch it on streaming. If it's easier to get listed on the war market, mercs will sell their services there and not on back alleys. If you want to buy a company, you go looking for them. There's more information about it in my other video. Overall, there's a lot of detail here that's too esoteric even for this video, but just know that there are processes in place for contracts, hiring, firing, termination, bidding wars, and more. You can work off the war market, but it's dangerous, untrustworthy, and leads to all kinds of neat plot possibilities. There is an algorithm called the scales that ranks and rates free companies based on a number of factors. It seems very complicated, but every rating has a clear goal. So, when you pull up a company and think about hiring them, take a look at all of their ratings and decide whether or not this company is for you. Employment history. Hire someone who is good at their job. Don't hire a scam artist. If they have any red flags, they'll be here. Combat victory record. CVR is calculated by user reviews, live reports, and visual evidence. At 100, you always complete all objectives with decisive victories and minimal losses. At zero, you fail in new and exciting ways. Cost efficiency and collateral damage. <laughs> Customer satisfaction and service extensions. You don't just have to complete the mission. You have to look good doing it. Seclock and Forco know how to show their clients a real good time. Maybe the tag pilot will let you ride in his mecha, and you can call it a Zoids. Present legal risk. Almost every free company has one or more lawsuits pending. Make sure you're not hiring someone who has more legal debt than skill at violence. Estimated combat potential. Can this company get to the mission on their own, or do they need to commute? How many knives do they own? Make sure to read this one very carefully based on your needs. For example, Drews or Yuan Yuan have extremely high ECP, but they're not very good at hostage negotiation. Media coverage. To be truly successful, you also have to put on a good show. War Corps and PR people always want to get the best footage. The very best mercenary companies know that you need to be entertaining both on and off the field. Hey, big thanks to Ellie for doing the narration there. If you thought that it was cool to get a guest voice, give me a like or a dislike and tell me who you'd want to get on instead. And uh, please give me a subscription because it makes me feel good. That is all. The League of Nations was an overambitious attempt to end war. It failed. The United Nations is a far less sweeping attempt. It's smaller in scope and way less powerful than the League was supposed to be. The creation of the modern UN didn't make war impossible, but it did make it less convenient and created a permanent place to work through disagreements. O12 is a mix of both. In creating the war market, they made mercenary work less of ad hoc piracy and more of a career. But ironically, this also made it much more popular. Thanks for watching. My next video is another user suggestion. Maybe I'll do a vid on the military orders this summer, who knows. But until then, happy hunting.